just bugging. Alright guys, back to the peewee. We've got to remove this nasty swing axle and replace the shaft seal. And I'm going to go ahead and replace the boots. They look like they've been recently done. I'm working on it. I want it right. So I'm going to replace them while I'm there, while I've got the whole tranny out. So uh, I'm going to do all the gaskets and seals on it and uh, clean it up and paint it and, and put it back in and the motor in there. Alright, so I'm, I've got to get my shifter coupler disconnected. There she is. Holy cow. That's weird. I mean, I've never seen a coupler like that. Hmm, interesting. Learn something new every day. That coupler looks nothing like the one I purchased for it, which is no big deal. Another part that goes in my stock. All right, she's out. Disconnected. Got the shifting coupler disconnected now. Got the wheels off. I'm gonna pull the drums, disconnect the part brake cable, disconnect the brake line so we can get to the three bolts and remove the axle from the chassis. Get the clutch cable to disconnect and then the clutch bracket and the grounding strap and then the front mount and then the two rear mounts. And we'll get this bad boy out of here and of course the bottom of the shock and uh, move the flexible brake line from the side of the axle. And we'll get this out of here and get it all cleaned up. And as you can see underneath here, you can see what I'm talking about. Of course, this seal's leaking back here. You can see it right behind the bearing. And then, see, I'm gonna have to take the boots off anyways because this plate has to come off here and there's an O-ring and a paper gasket there. And that's leaking like a sieve on both sides. The boots don't be leaking, but like I said, I'm taking them off. Just go ahead and replace them while you're there. You really hate to have to deal with that boot again. And who knows if somebody actually put it in the way I would with a little bit of RTV around the inside of here. And then, you know, the gasket back here, we call it the hockey stick, it's inside there. I'm still not sure what that extra linkage was. That little rubber boot looks good there. I hope that comes out because there was some sort of linkage on the end, but I assume that it's part of it right there. So we'll see. All right, so I'm waiting for Pat to get here and we'll get this swing axle out of there. I got over here, take off the drum and disconnect the part brake cable. I see this crazy contraption in here. Somebody let me know what the hell that is. That is strange. Huh, never seen that before. That's weird. I don't know what the hell that is, but I'm definitely gonna research it. Like I said, this is the oldest one I've ever worked on. It's like that. All right, gotta get this off. I wonder if I could grab it and pull it off there. Maybe easy, wouldn't it? But I'm gonna end up taking that off. These are all brand new shoes and pads, so don't need any of this. Somebody's already been here. Got Pat over here helping me out on this on Pee Wee swing axle. Again, if anybody knows what this is, or what the purpose of it is, I only found this on the right rear inside the brake drum. I paid hell trying to put the drum back on, so I didn't put it back on, because I still gotta go back there, you know, and connect the uh, part brake cable when I'm done with all this. But I noticed when I took off the left rear, there wasn't one underneath it. So if anybody knows why, if it's supposed to be one on one side, or what the purpose of it is, please let me know. I've never seen that before. Gotta do some research on that. So he's getting the clutch cable disconnected. We'll get these brake lines disconnected from the back of the drum. The wheel still so we're almost there. Got the axles removed, bolts out right here, shock removed, all the brake lines, the uh, clutch cable. And uh, now Pat's got to do his side. And then all we have is these two bolts on the end. Get that bad boy out of there. As we get it all disconnected, as you can see, and ran into another thing I haven't seen. It's a reverse switch. So I had to take this bracket off the end of the shifting rod on the tranny and it depresses this button here so i've never seen that before it's gonna be fun putting it back in there all right all right pat let's uh get this bad boy out of here let me drag it back up some all right let's drag it all right uh hold on Ugh. i think i'm clear you can go down pull out pull out there we go all right 
a little nasty. As you can see, it definitely needs a refresh. It is leaking everywhere it possibly could. And like I said, I'm gonna replace these anyways. Look at them, they're, they're a little aged and I don't want it leaking and because I tried to save 20 bucks. So we're gonna get this bad boy cleaned up. I'm back on Pee Wee's swing axle and got the right rear drum off. I'm gonna pull this seal cap off here and pull the bearings out. Then I gotta come up with a puller and pull the bearing off of the axle. And then I'm gonna take the boot off, remove this cap, and I can slide this whole axle tube off and I'll sandblast this, put the drum back over it and stand it up and sandblast all of this and so it can be painted nice and black. I may have said I wasn't gonna go into this area if it wasn't leaking, but <laughs> it's a real pain in the ass to put your O-ring over all of this, you know, so I'm stupid me, stupid is, stupid does. Does, but anyways I hadn't done a swing axle in a while and forgot anyways with all this weight on here it'd also be a pain in the ass to remove this back and I don't think it goes back far enough where you can get the seat clamp off and then pull the dog bone out but why would you do that with just remove the bearing so in other words I'm going to replace this seal kit here because I'm gonna go in there and a good time to inspect the bearings but with 63,000 miles on it I don't think that'll be an issue but then again with all the leaks it had could have gone kind of low on the gear oil Alrighty, well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this side all done. I've got some sandblasting to do on some parts for Gil's bumpers on the Orange Crush, so I wanna do the sandblasting at the same time. Now that I got some new tips for my blaster. I've got the cap and seal off. It's a pretty stiff seal there. Good idea to go here. And uh, you'll just notice the spacer. This is what the seal rides on. You wanna clean that up real good. And uh, see the beveled edge right here, and this is flat, and it's, you know, it's beveled inside of it. That goes right there before the bearing. So remember that so see how dirty it is on the outside that is portion that this seal rides on all right let's see this bearing is gonna come okay remember did it went like that of course you want your your uh, shock mount face the front of the vehicle and of course your brake cylinder will be at the top so get this all cleaned up and you see how flat the o-ring is does it even look like an o-ring? Well, it was. So you get the o-ring on there, and then there's a, usually a paper gasket there. They don't put it on, I guess, or whoever did that didn't put it on. I do it with some copper coat and paper gasket, the o-ring, some more copper coat, and slap that bitch together, because don't be surprised, you have to go back. So you end up leaking, and uh, it's no fun to do it when it's on a vehicle like that. All right, well, I'm sure it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get this bearing off. It's not gonna slide over this, so I've gotta come up with a puller. You gotta work it off enough, and then, I mean, I can try tapping this, but you don't wanna break an ear off, so I'm gonna work on that. Get all this off, too. Got all the little screws off of the boot, and you see, yeah, I see that they, in these older ones, that's the metal cone right there. And with the other swing axle, which is that one right there, and that's apparently you know, it's gonna be a 75. Anyways, um, that one has a plastic cone here. There's no plastic cone there, or maybe I, I, I'm mistaken and it's on the other side. I'm pretty sure it's on, yeah, it's on this side. I'll see, I don't remember. But I'm surprised I didn't think somebody put RTV in there because I didn't see any on the outside. But well, they did a good job to keep this coming on the outside. I like to put a little bit around here and of course up in that joint where it reaches together. But uh, that is that. Now I'll get all those nuts and washers off there and I'll get to trying to remove the bearing. So I'm going to replace these boots. I might clean them up and reuse them, but I'm gonna have to use the clamps anyway, so what the hell. I already purchased them for it. Save it for another rainy day when you get a torn boot on one side. Gonna look like new when I'm done, so let's uh, keep going with the new stuff. All right, like I said, I just haven't recalled. I didn't remember, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, there's that plastic cone I was talking about. It, it goes in between, you know, it's like a, a washer. So uh, we have a soft surface in between the two metal surfaces. And that, you know, and the oil prevents it from eating up the plastic and it just swivels around. Now, when you get to putting these gaskets in, you want to get an idea, get you a pick, and you need to pay attention to how many gaskets or either pull them all off and uh, get your thickness of what was on it because 
that is going to be like setting your end play for this to have the surface to move around in but not too much and not too little so you're going to want to carefully get these gaskets off because there's multiple ones of course you're going to have usually have a hard time getting them to separate because they've probably become one by now but you get the gist of it all right now we got the gaskets off and if you'll see there's one two three four five so it looks like there are five thick ones and one thin one so that's where he was checking it and trying it out and then putting it back on so so what i'm going to do is get my trusty old scissors here and that's my side to count them so i'll just cut that right there and save that for when i'm going to put it back on that is a crucial measurement you can get the feel of it you're going to do one side at a time and the first side is going to be the easiest because you can stand the axle up and get a feel of it all right now i'm going to try to clean this up a little bit prevent a lot of this stuff from getting in there and take all these nuts off and then pull this off but while i'm here right now i may see if this bearing's going to move clean this whole surface up here to give me a better opportunity to drag that bearing across there yeah i think that's what i'll do first see if i can get this out of the way but not so bad i've got it where the bearing has released as you see this cone stays here all the time that cone was apparently welded on after that was put over the tube all right there we go so I still got to get my bearing out of there, tap it from the inside, and this will get cleaned up and get more of this cap and clean all this up, and then I'll sandblast it. Of course, the bearing won't be there. And as you can see, I might get this is right rear. Alrighty, now to go for the other side. So that's what you're gonna see. You can see this moves around in here. Boy, that's a much smaller axle than what's in that. So here's your cone, and uh, it stays on that. I'll probably pull that off and clean that up there there you go clean that up so that's what you see and if you wanted to go further in there let me get my flashlight you wanted to get the dog bone out which is this you see how it's like the end of a dog bone well as you'll see in here let me get something to point with there is a snap ring right here and it is a booger to get out of there it's a strong one and now remember you got well there's the one right here way up there if you can see that that one's not the hard one to get out then there's a big uh, washer there you pull that washer out and then you'll have two halves pull each half out and then this whole dog bone will come out of here so we're not going to need to do that now i'm going to take this off and under here is the o-ring and, and you'll have a paper gasket and then you put a paper gasket on here so that's where we're at so i think i'll get the other side done before i remove this cap that's where we are on peewees swing axle refresh all right guys i've got this side off i wanted to mention again all right this was the set of gases i got off here remember and we had five yeah five thick five thick ones and one thin one you want to keep them separate because i'll mark them with something or put a tie on them this one kind of hard to determine they're stuck together really bad on this side it looks like either four or five this one could be two so you're just gonna have to judge it it's gonna give you a little of an idea so you know where to go and then you know like in this situation here it's within question so you you get an idea and then feel it tighten it down feel it open it back up put another one on you're not gonna have the bearing over here because you don't want to drive that on until you determine what kind of end play you want here so to speak all right so that's where we're at i've got to drive this bearing off or pull it off should i say and get these uh sandblasted today so you won't see any more of this until all this is sandblasted and painted i'll probably show you well i will show you me putting the gaskets and the shaft seal on and the throw out bearing so i got my bearings out of the axle tubes and i wanted to show you something do not forget this spacer because you're going to want to draw you're going to want to put your bearing back over the axle and of course it takes somewhat of uh, some effort to put it there now this is going to go down on your axle see the beveled edge on the inside goes inward i have done this before and forgot this piece and the axle won't fit right you won't get it to turn and then you're gonna tap that up onto the axle bearing right there so do not forget that and then of course you'll put your your washer on there like here on this side and then you'll put your o-ring on there and then put that spacer on that one right there that rides on the seal 
So that's what you want to do there. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. Now I'm going to clean these tubes up and get them ready to sandblast. I got the axle tubes out here all painted up. They look nice. The backing plates for the brakes full assembly. So as you can see, I got the cover off on the right rear, right side of the tranny. And I see that this is different than this swing axle. The O-ring was used on that one. Now I'm not sure I haven't pulled it out yet to see if the O-ring gets used on this one, but there was not an O-ring in there. Now I could explain why it leaked so much, but I don't exactly, it was leaking everywhere, but it had the paper gasket on it. I'm going to check and see if the O-ring fits on this one. And then that'll probably explain. I put both paper and O-ring on the last one. Maybe this one's just paper without an O-ring. I don't know, but I noticed the bearing is held inside here. Don't recall that on there. Or if maybe I didn't take that off. Maybe I just took the cover off because it wasn't leaking from the other side. I don't recall. So since I realized that after I pulled this off, I have another board with a hole cut through the center of it. So I'm gonna put it on saw horses and stand it up with that axle going through the hole in my board so I can place this back on that bearing. It does have a little bit of movement around to get that placed in here. So I was wondering why it was taking so long to get it off. But I took that one off because I put the O-ring on it. Yeah, so it must be a different inside. I don't recall. It's been a, been a while. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I've got this all cleaned up really nice. And get out my gaskets and get ready to position this to close it up. So I got it positioned. The last one, I noticed these are much smaller diameter axles and that is a different axle on that one. I think that's a longer version of the swing axle and this is a shorter version. I'm not for certain. Please correct me if you know both better because I'm sure you do. But see how the bearing moves? This piece will move in there. So it's going to have to be centered for this to drop back down there. And I don't recall it being like that on that one where the bearing was all out here by itself and then it's centered with this. So I want to be careful and I want to make sure that I'm sitting up level and then I'll drop this down on here and get the bearing where it'll drop in there. So in that flat spot goes to the top like so. So, and I did notice that there was no O-ring in here. And like I said, I'm going to concern, confirm that, that there's not supposed to be one in there because I'm pretty sure there is. And this one had paper gaskets on it. Now, when I took that one apart, it had an O-ring and no paper gasket. That might be the thing. So they are German bearings and the bearing feels fine. There's no actual play in it. So that's a good thing. And everything really does look nice down in there. See it, it'll still turn when it's up like this because I have my axle through a hole down there. So everything looks nice in here. So I'm going to do one side at a time. I will confirm the O-ring paper gasket deal. And while I got it like this, it's really good for me to get some more of this grime out of it once I close it back up. All right, guys, did some research. And the more I saw uh, people putting these together, and of course, not many of them were back, you know, as 61, they were all newer swing axles and the one with the bigger diameter axles. And now see this kit, when you look it up for the 61, it gives you this kit. And I see that 61 through 79 is when they started using the O-ring. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, but this car had 63,000 miles on it. And I do not believe anyone from the signs of me taking it apart, every washer was on it, everything was on it correctly. I don't think anybody's been in here. There was no O-ring. And that's where I'm understanding that at that time when they went to the O-ring. And then in some of the videos, I see someone say, I have to look that up so don't put it in the video. He mentioned that and because he was putting an O-ring on it. And he goes, and some of them don't come with the O-ring. It's the earlier models, which I think this is where it is. And it could have been halfway in the year or whatever. But there wasn't an O-ring in there. It was just a paper gasket. Clearance is everything. I'm not going to change it. And it doesn't look as though the lip as far as it is on the other. It's, it's a sharp edge here. It's not a slight beveled edge, you know so it would just cut it so i'm gonna go with what it was when i took it off i'm, I'm putting this indian head you know shellac gasket seal i like that stuff you know it's like your aviation use what you want that's what I, I like so i put that on the gasket here i'm gonna let this not completely dry make it where it's good and tack staying where i want it and then i'll put another coat on it or i might coat i'll probably coat here and then i guys carefully lay it down and then move the axle around a little bit so the bearing starts to go in here i'll put a little film of oil on this to make sure it drops in there nicely 
and we'll close this side up as you see i went around it with a rag and cleaned my surfaces so that's what i'm gonna do now better yet so I'll, while this is drying i need to clean those nuts and bolts i'm just gonna soak those be wire brushing them i got the cap on there nicely now everything went down good so now i'm gonna put all my stuff back on on my washers and my clean nuts these nuts there you go and then i guess i'll get ready to uh put the uh axle cone down all right so that's what i'm doing right now it's uh going together nicely to cap on i've got my little plastic cone here put a little bit of gear oil around here just a smidget on it it's gonna get some gear oil on it I wanted to change my kind of feel of it sliding around on there. All right, just work it down into the cone. You see at one point in time, somebody got some trash in the boots there. A light coat, some gear oil. Get a little bit of it. Try not to get it all over where I'm going to be putting my gaskets down. All right, then you remember, I'm going to go ahead and be a clean rag. Remember when we took the cover off, we had to keep track of how many gaskets were used, and we had determined, let me get what I was gonna get, ADD, that be me. All right guys, I'm back on the tranny, and we are on right rear. As you recall, we took these gaskets off. I had it labeled in a bag. I've already removed it from the bag, which is over there. We had four thick ones and one thin one. Now you could mic it out, you know, measure it, figure out what you got, and then go over and get your gaskets. But you're gonna get a feel of it anyways, and you aren't gonna put any sealant on these. So these are pretty thick ones here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay me four of them down. It was five and a thin one. I'll get another one. And, and I will want to put a little bit of oil on here. And I was gonna get me one more gasket. That makes five big ones. And we're gonna see what that feels like. A little more oil on here. And then put a little bit of oil on here. All right, there we go. I was careful not to get any on the other surface, so. boy up on there. There we go. Let me lay this down a little bit. Give me some nuts. Maybe six. Yeah. Clean everything up nicely. People just don't think there's a purpose for a washer. I didn't need that. Okay. You want know, all your nuts and bolts come off. Seem to loosen up and back up. We don't need that at just bugging. We want it right. Right. Enough horse playing. So we're going to tighten this down. I need to look up the torque specs for how tight this is. It's a lot cleaner now. I think it's too many gasket. Hmm. I think it could take one out. I think it's a, a little too loose. You know, I think the torque is much more than like 13 pounds on it, so it's really going to make a difference. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I'll look it up later. I can always hit it one more time. Oopsie daisy. You think I have some oily hands? Hmm. Would you just look at that? Well, Would you look at that? Yeah. Would you just look at that? Would you look at this? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. I thought I was going to stop horsing around. I'm glad when a new guy comes into this month, could use some help. There are a lot of people out there want help too, and I got people that have been around here from the beginning of me starting this, and I gotta get them out of here first. But I try, I try, I can't do them all. All right, let's pick her up and take one gasket off. Back to life, back to reality. Back to life, back to reality. Ooh, ooh, here comes the thunder. At least it wasn't like Pensacola. They are out in canoes and boats. Thank God they didn't come here. I'm feeling better now. You don't want to just drop. 
but you don't want it to have a whole lot of resistance. Now you gotta understand, I don't have that thick of a film of uh, oil on there. That's gonna have some oil on it, some gear oil. And then when you're in question, you get it where you think you want it. And put a little bit more oil on it. Okay, all right, let's put a little bit of gear oil on it. I'm gonna leave that there for now. I kind of like it. it. It does have a few little spots. I think it should have a little less drag, but again, I don't have a whole lot of film underneath the cone. So I'm gonna wait until the very end and let some of the oil fall from the other side when I'm working on the other side into that and I'll check it out then. So that's pretty much how you do it until it's got slight drag on it. It doesn't fall slap over, but you can put it in the, you know, toward the downward motion and then it'll drop. You feel it getting a little tight. Let's see right there, concerned, but like I said, I don't have any oil in there right now. So that little bit will probably go away because it seems to be feeling better. All right, so that's how you do it. And I'm just gonna repeat the, what I did on this side on the other side, so no sense and showing you more of that. I'll end up taking off the tail shaft cover here and replacing that gasket, which I have over there. Y'all wanna pay attention when you do that. There are two different gaskets. I'll discuss that later when I get them out. All right, I've got it repositioned now. You see I'm on the other side, the side which is the driver's side with the clutch cable stand right there. And as you can see, I haven't picked it up yet. And you can see for yourself, paper gasket only, no O-ring. So I do believe this came with no O-ring. So it's going back that way. I do not want to go screwing it up and it doesn't sit properly and I messed something up. And I am aware that it does change around 61, but I'm not finding the information on breaking it down exactly when that change happened. Let me shut that down. So for instance, like the front suspension, a Super Beetle change in June 30th or whatever, 1973 and changed to a different from stamped control arms to a cast control arm or vice versa i can't remember which one went. superseded the other but just letting you know sometimes things have halfway through a model year so we've got this taken apart i'm gonna have to clean that cap scrape everything out of it and um We'll uh, get this side back together. Then all I have is the cone gasket and the shaft seal and uh, clean up some more inside here. It was really nasty from the rear main and all the oil leaking on the motor. So clean all this up and she'll have a nice sealed up transmission and everything will look like new. We're gonna change these transmission mounts and see that it's starting to separate, see? right there so just in time for a front transmission mount all right guys i'm going for the shaft seal look how nasty that is you know more and more i look at it i guess it, it's a little different of a seal let me get a flat tip as you can see it doesn't ride on the shaft right there it rides way back there and this one rides on the very back side and the front side. Maybe that's an improvement. And you see, if I lay it on here, see how much larger that one looks? Well, when I took a flat tip screwdriver, it appears, I can get it to push it out, that it has a lip on the edge and it probably is the same diameter, but it's gotta come out anyways. You can see the oil has been pouring out of the bottom of it. So, I get my trusty little homemade. Oh, that felt really nice on my kneecap. All right, let's see how difficult this one's gonna be. Kind of going that way. I might be taking some time working this one out. All right, well, I'll get back with you on that. Well, that wasn't bad. I've had worse, and it's just as I suspected. So back then, apparently, they made a single seal. This is a double seal. It has one on the back and one on the front. So, and it had a recessed lip around it. As you can see, that's the exact same diameter. This is the face of it. And see, it's a single seal and this is a double seal. So that explains it. So looks so nice in here. And then I'll have a clean surface to deal with on this shaft because it wasn't a double seal. Let me see. Huh. So let's see here. Well, it's got a nice firm fit. Now, you can see I've got a lot going on in here. I've got stuff everywhere. So see, this is my makeshift shaft seal buddy the seal installer, which is an attachment for a shop bag. 
and it fits really nice on that seal looking nice yeah, I slapped it in there nice that time One more tap yep that sounds like a dead head and it looks like it does ride the inside was tighter so we can knock it down one more time all right looking pretty good there yep that should work nicely oh, i get some of this cleaned up i'm gonna take my old towel here give it one last use and throw it away all right now the only thing i've got left to do to this is the nose cone gasket and then i'm gonna flip it upside down and put new trans mounts on it front and rear and clean it one more time i like to use some carburetor cleaner at the end blow it off with a air nozzle and we can put this back in it's a little cleaner in here much nicer all right now we've got the brand new throw out bearing just a little different but same now this is the retainer clips that came off of it these are called super clips a little bit more difficult to install but better results it is not going to come popping off all right so this is going to be a bugger to install so i'm going to do this probably off camera so you don't see my frustration let's see here Side. That wasn't too bad, but I probably spoke too soon. You stick the straight piece right there, if you can see, into the hole, and then take probably just walk it around. And then there's a tooth around the back, and if you just heard that click, that was it. So spin freely. All right, that'll work. That one is on the clip. That one's on the clip. All right, so now all we do have is that side. I readjust and put another shim on this. It was just binding a little bit. Feels nice now. When I flip it back up, I'll uh, reconfirm that I like the other side. Now, let's see. I have some new transmission mounts somewhere. I have a set somewhere. All right, I found them. There they are. That's what goes there. Ta-da! All right, I got those brand new. And I thought I was out of these, the axle seals, so I have what it takes to put this all back together and paint it up. All right, here's my old nasty shaft seal. All right, see I got my new transmission mount, so I'm gonna clean this nasty thing up. And here's the old ones. They're not separated yet, but you can see they're swelling. And this one actually might be close to separating. See, it's all swollen past the sides. Yeah. You're here. It's a pain in the butt to do once the motor's in there. So actually you gotta pull the motor out to do it anyways. But so in other words, for $14, go ahead and do it. All right, I still don't have, I don't have that mount. So I'm going to take that one off and purchase that one. All right. All right, guys, I'm back on Pee Wee's swing axle transmission, the refresh, and I've got all the nuts off for the nose cone here where the hockey stick is, what they call it. Let's see. There we go. You want to pay attention to where the shifter lever is. Let it kind of sink back in. You see where it is? It's right in there. Can you see that? And then pull that out. And you know where you want to put it next time when you go back in. There you go. So, all right. Look at there. See? See the oil? gasket was completely gone so let's take a look at it there's my flashlight uh yeah and see the gasket was just leaking everywhere huh i guess that's the way that's supposed to be it's locked on there all right well i need to get this paper gasket off of here so that's where i'm at i got my gasket in there and you want to pay attention to like i said before you'll have two different gaskets that can go on that you see one's got the larger piece right there and get down here and look at it it's that one right there see they don't put this on this one like that you see there's one out like that it's a little different i guess it doesn't matter on this one but actually see you have your passages up here so we're gonna stick to this one 
But then again, they do have that section that goes out there. So this really isn't going to bother it if that was there. Oh, that's still gonna go under, underneath it. So since that little leg right there kicked out there, I don't see much of a purpose in it. I'll go ahead and use this one. All right, that's where I'm at. All right, guys, it was the gasket with the larger area, you just couldn't see it on there. So there's a difference. Get there. You stick back in there, just like that, no big deal. I've already cleaned the washers and nuts. I removed the front transmission mount it's not a fun thing to get to when the car is in there because you've got the these studs going that way and then two studs in the car coming out this way so it's really hard to get this thing out and change it while it's in the car and you can see better when it was on there but it's separating from right here oh right there see separating on along here and here see the line it's almost going to completely detach so gonna get a new one of those and so that is it with the tranny refresh and i'm going to mount it back in the car as you see it now because it weighs less than to have the brake assemblies on it and be much easier getting it up in there without the brake assemblies on it and mounting everything right here and then put your seal kits on and your bearing for your axle tap that in and good to go hook all your brake lines back up your park brake cable adjust your brakes and be done with it and then we can get ready to put the engine in there i've got to get the right smaller diameter exhaust clamp so i can put the entire heater box assembly on it that's why you don't see it on them now and then uh before that i'm gonna convert everything back to six volt and now you're wondering why well it's a true survivor and they want it to stay original so i was waiting on some points and rotor and cap and got tired of waiting so i went ahead and used some of my parts a 12 volt coil and a distributor to get it to start and run and get the break in done with so that's why that's on there so it's been a successful refresh and find anything in there in question and that nut on there was around a little bit because of the preload that's it with the swing axle refresh for peewees until we get it up in the car we are back on peewee and as you can see we got the swing axle up in here about to stab it i failed to remember to get the camera and put it on my head so that's where we're at now as you can see this thing looks pretty up in there got the new shifter boot up on it got a lot of brand new brake lines under here and all so we're gonna get on with this get it up in there and next week i hope to put the motor back up in it i'm waiting on a couple of parts and i've got to replace the rear main seal and make sure that there are no push rod tube seals are leaking or anything just go over the whole motor and uh the starter we were having problems with it cranking up before and the battery's 2019 and I load tested it, it's good but the starter dragged it was just too slow when we were trying to start it the first time on the break-in and we realized we had a weak spark well well, I put it all back together with new stuff. I ended up putting my stuff on it to crank it up with 12 volts and put a, a universal starter on it and put it back the way it was and it just cranked over too slow and then the starter starts getting too hot so I ordered a new starter. So. And it arrives Tuesday and we'll try to get this motor up in here Wednesday. So All right guys. That wasn't too much. We got it up in here now. Uh, all right, guys, it's time to get back on Pee Wee. I've got all the issues I found with the break-in on the motor. A few push rod tubes were leaking. I've uh, dealt with all that. So now it's time to get the boots on to the transmission and install the brakes and everything and the axle seals. I've already put in the new seals and I've got all the gaskets and O-rings and everything. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Let's get started. I'm going to get on the boots first and periodically you film it but it's going to be kind of hard to get in there and have this gopro on my head so but i'll periodically show you where I'm all right at. well i haven't connected it over here because i wanted to wait and put my boots in here i didn't want to put it on there and fasten it and then twist the axle and mess them up so i don't want anything to leak so i take these boots go ahead and re-clean the inside surface you're gonna wanna put RTV around this all the way down it. You're gonna wanna put RTV in here and then close this up. You can put a little film on here if you'd like to. It's not really necessary. Usually where it's gonna leak is on this end. That's I'm probably gonna put some here, but just a very small amount if you want to. It's not really necessary, but it needs to be in here. Like the laces is what I'd call it. So, all right, well, this camera's gonna be in the way, so I'll get back to you. 
All right, guys, if you can see that, I've got the boot all the way up on there. Let me get this back up. You want to make sure you're on that lip all the way up to the cone. Get your big clamp. You're going to put these on first and don't do this one yet. And we're going to get the axle down here and then put it back in there. I mean, you, but make sure it's all the way around. So I'm going to go get what I need for these and go ahead and put my clamps on it and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I got my boot on. Got all my nuts and bolts. I don't know if you all can see this. But I don't tighten these too much. I have RTV on the thread, so I think it's gonna stay in there nicely because they're not locking nuts. Really don't use a ratchet. Well, there's one boot. Now I'm gonna get ready to put this axle all up here. All right, guys, done with the boot, as you can see. And I want to point out, before you go putting this axle bearing on, be sure to put this on. I have done that before and had to pay hell to get the bearing back out. But if you want this side, the beveled side, make sure the camera's right. You want that to go inwards to go on that surface. And then take your bearing and you're gonna have to basically pound this on. It didn't matter which side. So I'm gonna go get something to drive this on and get on with it and get ready to put the O-ring, the paper gasket and everything on there. What I like to do is take that copper coat, aviation sealant and put that back here and put the paper gasket on there and then roll the O-ring in your hand backwards so that it rolls forward and stays on it. And then let that dry pretty good and then put your paper gasket on the other side, let it dry, shove it up in there and put all your pieces you gotta put your bolts in there because it's pain in the butt. I'm gonna get a wire wheel and clean this up a little bit. Uh, get on with this. All right, guys, I got the bearing in there. I'm gonna point out that you put your washer on here or your shim, whatever you wanna call it, and then the O-ring, and then be sure to not put this in backwards. Can you see that? See how it's got a bevel on the inside and then on the edge of the outside, and you can see it's dirty. This is what was sticking out, so that's gonna go right there and the o-ring will be inside it and that will seal that all right now i'm gonna get ready to put my paper gasket and my o-ring on here and close this side up okay as you can see i've got my permatex indian head gasket it's black i like using that i put it on there and i've got my o-ring on there kind of helps to keep it there and uh as it kind of gets a little harder you can go around and push that o-ring up in there i've learned to do it this way because it's known to roll off and you have a leaky axle and it sucks. So, and then I go ahead and put the paper gasket on that and glue it down to that and then put this and glue it down and then when this starts to stick well, take your razor blade and trim off the edge. It's a little, the hole's a little too small. All right, so I'm gonna get this sandwich together. All right, guys, I've got it all on there. I think the O-ring stayed where I wanted it to, so. Time to close this side up. Brake lines are all hooked up. Park brake cables hooked up. And then I'll get to the other side. All right, guys, I'm all done. You see, we've got the other boot on over there. Got my uh, brakes all assembled and sealed up. The axle seal's all sealed up. Everything's hooked up. It's ready for a motor now. I put the clutch cable back on slightly, you know, just just slightly. And I'll have to come back in here and adjust it. So I took the motor off to the stand in there and gonna replace the rear main. I think they scarred it or something when they put the flywheel on and put a new O-ring in there and put everything back together. And probably gonna go ahead and start it up again because I haven't ran it on the six volt. I have it all on it, but the starter was weak. So hopefully all that goes well. I mean, I load tested battery. It says okay, and it's in 2019. I want to charge it overnight, and tomorrow I'll try to run it again and fine tune it, and then hopefully we'll be slapping this up in there tomorrow afternoon. Then I've got to get it on other jobs, but Pee Wee's going to get together soon, and probably going to get them to do a few minor things. I'm going to fix the wiring and everything, and let her go and enjoy it a little bit, and bring it back, and we'll do all the cosmetics on it and everything, because I uh, don't want it to sit here for too long. I'd rather be in her garage so I can free up time to get all that done. We'll see. Stay tuned for more progress on Pee Wee, the 1961 Ragtop Beetle True Survivor. Hey guys, it's Dalton. I know this was a long video and I know towards the end the camera wasn't angled in the right direction, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and have a just bugging of a day.